Hello there. Ever since the UK electorate made the wise decision to vote to leave the European Union, those across the EU and the UK that wish us to remain locked inside it have been using every excuse they can find to slow the process down. To guess what? Reverse that decision. Firstly, as ever, please kick that YouTube algorithm up the jacksy by giving this video a big fat like. Now that our Prime Minister Boris Johnson has managed to attach a V8 turbocharged engine onto the Brexit wagon, you would think that a grateful European Union would be cheerily waving us off into the new year, so that they can then get on with sorting out their own internal wranglings over their now sterling starved budget for 2021 and beyond. But no, it seems they want to string out this shared Brexit torment for as long as they can. And who can blame them? While there's an ever-open, money-spewing spigot drawing wealth out of the UK Treasury and pouring it into the gaping maw of the Brussels coffers. And that spigot is due to be turned off on the 31st of December 2020, when the Brexit implementation period is currently due to end. Oh, happy days! But during that Brexit implementation period, the UK will still be under the thrall of the EU and its courts, while we try to hammer out a trade deal going forward. Brexit implementation period, or Brexit trade talks. Those phrases will soon be household terms as we enter the next phase of this process for leaving the European Union. But Brexit implementation period is a bit of a mouthful. So in order to keep it short, I'll just have to choose between BIP or BRIP. And just to keep the whole Brexit flow of terminology going, I think I'll call it the BRIP. So for the 11 months after January 2020, we'll be in the grip of the BRIP. Now, the UK will be sloughing off the original EU treaties at 11pm on the 31st of January 2020. Barring, that is, some unprecedented upheaval occurring within the next 34 days that forces the UK to either extend the Article 50 process yet again or to even revoke the Article 50 letter itself. And what an upheaval it would have to be to force either of those on us. And what a national upheaval would result if we did. So we leave the EU treaties on the 31st of January, only to be instantly swallowed up by another treaty with the EU, the Withdrawal Agreement Treaty. And that is the treaty that puts us in the grip of the BRIP, the Brexit implementation period. Now the BRIP is due to end on the 31st of December 2020, by which time some sort of agreeable deal will have, or should have been, settled between the EU and the UK, for us to then slip seamlessly into it on the 1st of January 2021. As you'll know, there is a clause in the Withdrawal Agreement Treaty that allows the UK and EU to agree before the 1st of July to a one-off extension to the BRIP of either one or two years. But our Parliament is on course to making it illegal for the UK government to agree to do that once the Withdrawal Agreement Bill becomes law. So unless our Parliament then changes its mind, we are forced to leave the BRIP by the end of 2020, deal or no deal. There we go, back to the no deal option as before. Deja vu all over again. And the newly formed rejoiners will be trying to use that as an argument to extend the BRIP or even rejoin the EU. Furthermore, these negotiations can only start once we are outside the EU on the 1st of February. And that means there is a period of only 11 months to get this new deal agreed, signed, sealed and delivered. The UK side wants to get on and agree a deal so it can move on into the future. 
But the EU has other priorities where Brexit and the UK are concerned. The UK wants a free trade deal with the EU that allows us to trade independently around the world with whom we like, unfettered by EU interference. While the EU wants to tie the UK down into the confines of its own level playing field that forces us to obey their rules, so limiting our freedoms to trade globally on our own terms. The EU does not want a successful UK sat on its doorstep. In fact, for its very own survival, it needs the UK either within the EU or at least controlled by it. Because if the UK becomes successful in its own right, it will become a magnet for other EU member states looking for a looser block to trade within, and leaving the EU to go for it UK style might just suit them. So the EU won't just be competing with the UK on trading terms, it will also be competing with us on geographical reach. What if, member state by member state, the UK does to the EU exactly what the EU has been doing to the continent of Europe for the last few decades, but not by trying to build some sort of new empire or superstate, but by trading and cooperation without including the need to join politically and bureaucratically at the hip and shoulder. Interesting concept, don't you think? But whatever we decide to do, we have to sever the ties with the EU as quickly as possible, and the EU knows this. So already we have the new EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen claiming that there is insufficient time to come to a deal, saying I am very concerned about how little time we have. I think it would be reasonable to take stock in the middle of the year and, if necessary, agree on an extension to the transition period. So she seems to be angling for the UK to agree to a BRIP extension before July the 1st. And when you think how much they need to tie us down, so as to keep themselves and their industries safe with a compliant and wealthy country into which they can pour their produce at effectively tied prices, you can understand her concerns. They will be working to try and weave as much of the old EU treaties into this new agreement as they can get away with, which is something we must never allow. How else are they to make sure that their fishing vessels, for example, can always catch what they want in our waters and land them in their home ports? How else can they ensure that we will never truly compete with their industries? How else can they ensure that they once again build in freedom of movement of people back into UK law? How else can they ensure an agreement that includes the continuation of the UK somehow handing over vast amounts of money for little in return? How else are they to ensure that our security and armed forces are to all intents and purposes just a part of the EU defence forces? The list goes on. But to do that they need time, and time is something we must starve them of. I would have preferred to see us reduce that time frame down to zero days with a clean break Brexit on exit day, now at the end of January. But if we are to have a BRIP, let's limit it down to the minimum 11 months and keep it there. It also keeps the threat of a no deal hanging over the EU. And as ever, the EU has already opened its side of the negotiation talks by saying that not only will it straight away be demanding full access to our fishing grounds, but also that it will prevent our city firms gaining access to EU markets unless we agree to stay inside the confines of their level playing field. You know, that level playing field that always seems to have the money running in their direction. On our fishing waters, the Express has a story warning that there are plans for 10 EU-based super trawlers to come in and hoover up fish around the UK during the BRIP when we are legally powerless to stop it. Sounds more like a protection racket than a trading block to me. You know, a sort of, you agree to my terms on fish or you won't have any left to catch type of thing. And then there's data sharing. The new EU data protection supervisor 
Wojciech Werewoski, has claimed that although the UK is fully aligned with the EU right now on these matters, we would suddenly end up 13th in the queue when it came to an agreement on them in any new deal. It's definitely something about us Brits, isn't it? Always expected to queue for everything. All this is, of course, designed to slow the process down as much as possible to get the UK to agree to extend the BRIP by one, or more preferably for them, two years. And as I said earlier, any such decision has to be made by the end of June next year. That means to me that all we'll be seeing from the EU for the first five months from February through to the end of June is stalling tactics and talk about how impossible sorting out a new deal is, as well as claims that they are too busy elsewhere and we'll have to wait our turn, as 13th in the queue presumably. And on this side of the channel, all we'll have from the rejoin campaign because, as I said earlier, that's what the Remainers will have become by then. All we'll see from the Rejoiners is, I told you so's, and lots of wailing about going back in. So please, all of you Brexiteers, just be prepared for all of that sad stuff. So in truth, because of that potentially wasted first five months, we may only really have the six months from the 1st of July to the end of December to get a free trade deal properly sorted. As we all know, we need tightly defined deadlines, because under Parkinson's law, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So allowing more time will guarantee that time is taken up. But one thing I will ask is how can being 13th in a queue be the same as sticking to the requirements of the withdrawal agreement and political declaration to, in full mutual respect and good faith, assist each other in carrying out tasks which flow from this agreement? Just asking. But it seems that compromise from the UK is in the air. Talking to LBC Radio's Liam Halligan, the Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage said it was not now possible to get everything he wanted from Brexit, but that Boris Johnson was heading in the right direction. For the first time, I think we've potentially got the upper hand in these negotiations, he said. So we could end up leaving with no trade deal. But if that happens, so what, frankly? Business will adapt. We all adapt to change circumstances. I would say there's a 25% chance of us leaving with no trade deal. I wouldn't put it at more than that. And he also said, As a Brexiteer, I know I'm not going to get everything I want. That's just not possible. There are going to be all sorts of compromises on fishing, I'm sure. But have we turned the corner? Are we heading to the right place? Yes. Wonder how hard he found it to say all that. Now, there are many people who are looking at the Queen's New Year's Honours list with some bewilderment and maybe anger at some of those included and some of the omissions from that list, with the question on Brexiteer lips of why isn't Nigel Farage at least Sir Nigel? But take heart, there is always next year, at which point we will, apart from a few minor technicalities, have finally left the clutches of the EU. In fact, that might be a more fitting time. Who knows? And I certainly don't know how these things work. But there is also another name missing from that list, who is very unlikely to get another go at it, and that is the former Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko. It appears that the chickens have come home to roost for ex-Speaker Burko, who will not follow the 230-year-old convention that all former speakers automatically ascend to the red leather seats of the House of Lords. This would have been his time, one supposes, had he stuck to the rules of true impartiality. But instead, he decided his task was to unsuccessfully try and save the nation from its own electorate. Silly boy. He got zero out of two, instead of a possible one out of two. That leaves only two routes for him to get a job working in the House of Lords. The first is, he could learn how to cook a cake, 
seems to work for some where honours are concerned. That may open a path to Burko getting one of those ermine robes, but it would have to be one hell of a cake. Or as a newly employed Westminster cleaner proceeding around those hallowed benches, feather duster in hand, keeping at bay all those cobwebs and dust that accumulate so readily around this ossifying members. Otherwise he'll just have to sell off his services to anyone who wants to hear him shout, Order! You never know, he might get the odd church fate engagement, if he's lucky. Anyway, what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.